Hello, my name is Jim. Welcome to my channel about books and reading and stuff. Today I want to do a tag. This is the little literary tag. This was created by Mark at Book Time with Elvis when he was just a fledgling booktuber a couple of months ago. I saw it recently on Margaret Pinar's channel. I haven't been tagged by anyone but I looked a fun tag so let's have a look. Uh, ten prompts for this tag. The first one, Tolkien once said that Celador is the most beautiful expression in English. What do you think is the most beautiful word or phrase in English or in any language? For this I would choose the word serendipity. Serendipity means you find something that you really wanted but you weren't actually looking for it. I have often found things serendipitously when I'm watching other booktube channels like Steve's booktube channel or Hannah or Roz I find a lot of things in their channels serendipitously. What words in English do you find the most amusing? I can think of a couple. There's scallydandling which I'm not even sure if it's a real word or not or whether Roz just made it up for a channel. It's about going around reading books from different countries and there's bamboozle to fool somebody. It's got this nice sound, the bamboozle. Question three. Have you memorised any poems in full to whip out now and then to impress your friends? If so, which ones? There is a poem in Georgian that I often recite. It's called Kari Chris. It's by Galaktion Tabidze. Kari Chris means uh, the wind blows. And whenever it's a windy day, today is quite windy, I might pull it out just to impress people that I do know some poetry in Georgian. It begins, Kari Chris, Kari Chris, Kari Chris, Potla Bi Makriyan Kadaka, Heta Riggs, Heta Jaz Rakalad Chris, Sadaka, 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 Isev Tsums, Isev Tovs, Isev Tovs, Vergi Pove, Verastros, Verastros, etc, etc. Question four. Who or what do you consider an underrated or underappreciated book or author? For this I'll mention another booktuber, that's Margaret Pinard. Her book The Keening is a wonderful book. It's, I've mentioned it many times on this channel. It's about a family from the island of Mull in the 1820s in the Scottish Highlands who are thrown off their land by a greedy laird and they go first to Glasgow and then to Nova Scotia to start a new life and about the struggles they encounter. It's a wonderful family saga and I really enjoyed it. Which book do you consider to have the most memorable beginning? There's quite a few in this category and I've written them down because my memory is not very good with memorable beginnings. I just read Anna Karenina recently all happy families are alike. Each unhappy family is unhappy in its own way. It's a very famous opening line. The second one, far out in the uncharted backwaters of the unfashionable end of the western spiral arm of the galaxy, lies a small unregarded yellow sun. Do you know which that's from? That's from The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy by Douglas Adams. And the final one I've got down here. As Gregor Samsa awoke one morning from uneasy dreams, he found himself transformed in his bed into a gigantic insect. This of course is Franz Kafka's Metamorphosis. Question six, which book title best describes your life? I think I'll have to go with Shakespeare for this and much ado about nothing. Prompt number seven. What was the last book you read that led to a moistening of the eyes? This would be the last book I finished, which was The Pear Field by Nana Ekvtimishvili. Uh, this was a difficult book, it was very bleak. What got me was the needless killing of two dogs. The first dog was killed 
in a very horrible way. And the second dog, Bandit, we got to know a little, and Bandit was killed by its master because it failed to stop the children climbing up the cherry tree, which seemed a stupid way, a stupid reason for killing a dog. Uh, a lot of you have said you'd like to see more of Abby in these videos, so I'll show you Abby now, but I think she's sleeping. Here's Abby, sleeping as usual. Question 8. When it's time to shuffle off this mortal coil and go to the big library in the sky, what bookish literary quote would you like engraved on your headstone? I'm not sure about bookish or literary quotes. I thought maybe something amusing like I was hoping for a pyramid. If you wrote a book and didn't want to use your own name, what name would you choose as a suitable pen name? Uh, probably Yago something. In Second Life my character was Yago Zabiba and I've also used Yago Sapat on various websites. Uh, Yago is the evil character from Othello. He's evil but he's quite clever. Yago is also the name for James and I'm Jim so Yago seems appropriate. Zabiba this was just one of the options they had on Second Life and Zapat because I had a cartoon strip called Betty Zapat. Betty Zapat was the name of a cat but it was from the play on the French idea of Betty Zapat, a stupid thing with paws. So Be Betty Zapat, Betty Zapat, yeah. You get the idea, or maybe you don't, but that's what I would choose. And the last Number 10. Many literary characters have sidekicks or henchmen. Who would you choose to be your companion on your life adventures? Here I think I'd choose Phileas Fogg's valet, Passepartout, because he's very resourceful. And I love Around the World in 80 Days by Jules Verne. Who do I tag? I don't know who's done this tag. Uh, as I've been doing for the past few tags. I'll tag three people who show up high in my subscription feed and today that is Michael K. Vaughan, it's Paula at Draw Your Book and Kate Howell. I don't know if any of them have done this tag but these are the three I tag and I tag you. If you want to do this tag, if you haven't done this tag, please feel free to do this. So thank you Mark, Book Time with Elvis for a fun tag. If you like this video you can like and subscribe below and I will see you on the next video. Goodbye.